It was the golden age of mass-produced handwritten books. A style of writing had to be used that was quick to write. But another very large consideration was the cost of materials. Writing on calfskin vellum and parchments were very expensive. The more letters and words you could put in a smaller space, the more economical it would be to produce a book. So the more words or black ink and the less white space gave rise to the term black letter. When a letter form has a very narrow interior counter space, we say it's compressed. In black letter, we want to avoid a wide interior counter space. A counter space that is too wide is sometimes caused by thick thins barely touching one another. If instead we could merge these and overlap them, we would see how it creates a narrow compressed interior counter. That's what we're after. We want to make sure there are no thick thins, but instead make our strokes overlap one another. The more these strokes overlap, the more they squeeze out that interior counter space and create a density of form that is one of the chief characteristics of black letter. W starts with a steep pin angle, making the slab serif, which penetrates the top guideline just a little bit. Coming back with a flat pin angle, we overlap and drive down, making that strong vertical, which stops just a little shy of the bottom baseline. The steep pin angle, come back, make the elongated diamond shape at the bottom. At the top, the steep pin angle, the slab serif again. Going back to our flatter pin angle, Overlap, drive down, and overlap at the bottom. Come back with this steep pin angle, make your elongated diamond shape, make it crisp. At the top now, with our flat pin angle, we start the last stroke above the guideline. We make a little move to the left, then drive down with a strong vertical stroke that at the bottom overlaps and makes that little dimple shape. We start with our slab serif and then we come back with our flat pin angle, overlap and drive down to make a strong vertical, which stops just shy of the bottom baseline. Then we come back with our steep pin angle, overlap, make our little elongated diamond shape that penetrates through the baseline just a little bit. At the top we come back with another steep pin angle, making a slab serif again. Then we overlap that with a flat pin angle and we drive down, making our strong vertical stroke that overlaps at the top and overlaps at the bottom. Very, very strong. After the pin lift, we come back with the steep pin angle. Overlap, make our elongated diamond shape that pierces through the bottom somewhat. Then we start our last stroke above the guideline with our flat pin angle we get a little ink flowing, move to the left, drive down, make a strong vertical, keeping that interior counter space very compressed and overlap at the bottom to form that dimple shape. In all calligraphic forms made with a broad edge nib, pen angle dictates form. That is, that broad edged pen, when held at a flatter pen angle, drives the form wider creating wider counter spaces, not what we want in black letter. Instead, a steep overlapping pin angle at the top and bottom strokes creates a compressed interior counter space, very apparent when you superimpose one atop the other. On top, the cumulative effect is a more visually dense set of forms. Let's conclude our video with a study in contrasts. First, a brief overview of how black letter was used in the traditional design in medieval manuscripts, and then a look at how some contemporary lettering artists have used black letter in the gallery. As mentioned previously in this video, medieval scribes were very conscious of the fact that they had to conserve writing space because of the expensive writing surfaces, vellums and parchments. 
And one of the ways they did this was by shortening the interlinear space, that is, shortening the length of the ascenders and descenders. A good example of this is a double-page spread from the Gutenberg Bible, which, although printed with movable type, it emulated the lettering style, layout, and design practices of the day. One way scribes sought to make this increasingly more compact and thick visual page more legible was to divide it into narrow columns. If you would write all the way from one edge of a page to the other edge, it would be just too much for the eye. It was too dense. By dividing the page into narrow columns, they became much more legible visually, much like modern day newspapers divide their pages into narrow columns. It made whole dense pages of often small writing much more legible. Because of the density of the black letters, there was often a feeling of the whole page being thick and heavy, but it was also the range of colors themselves that were used to decorate and illuminate the pages in medieval design that were often very opaque, in much darker ranges, lower values of blues and reds that gave a sense of gravity and heaviness to the work. Making use of every inch of the page, trying to cram in the black letters, and the heaviness of color all gave most pages a sense of great mass and weight. Something we'll contrast in looking at contemporary artists in the gallery.